material I'm going to be working with is uh, a pen and ink and in calligraphy specifically. So all you're really going to need is three things. Um, one pen, a fountain pen or a dip pen. So I have a dip pen but I'd recommend if you have students doing it where you need a lot of them, I'd recommend a fountain pen just because they're a bit more simple to use. But the end product is nearly the same so there isn't really a difference in design really. Um, and basically there's only two pieces to this, the um, handle part and then the detachable nib part. So you can get multiple kinds of nibs that are thicker on the ends or thinner, like the one I have that comes to more of a point, based on how bold you want the lettering to be. Um, and then so the pen, the ink, which is just a basic black ink that I have, it's usually a little bit thicker so you might have to dilute it a little bit with water, but it, you can buy it at any craft store. And then paper. So I just have basic 8.5 by 11 paper, but you can use thicker paper like cardstock or is, if it's a good copy I'd rather have a different kind of paper so it doesn't bleed. But if you're working with this I would back it somehow just so that it doesn't bleed and there isn't as much of a mess or be prepared to clean up a bit if it's a class activity you're doing and you're working with younger students especially. Um, so activity wise um, what I would do is start off with letting students um, experiment a bit with what they want to do so or sorry the uh, the ink itself so basically I would just start with lines so you probably saw a bit there for a second that I you know one of my papers but um, just playing around with thickness um, where they learn that the more pressure you put on the thicker the line is going to be and the less pressure you put on the thinner the line is going to be so just have them kind of make straight lines vary it up keep it consistent see what kind of lines you can do and that they'll learn that if you need more ink you put it in the uh, ink container so tell them this if they're having problems, but they probably should be able to figure that out. So yeah, pretty simple. You can see that there are different thicknesses. They change thickness or they're the same thickness all the way through. Um, yeah, so that takes like probably less than a minute to do depending on how they're doing with the actual pen itself. I also model how to hold it if they don't know, just like a basic pen but with the nib, nib part being kind of more flat. And you can kind of feel it when it's right it's, if it's sideways, it doesn't kind of have the same kind of give against the paper. Um, but yeah, if you need to model it, I would. But um, So beyond this, I would just start with um, doing some kind of squiggly lines where you can kind of vary up the thickness there too. So just kind of going up and down. And you can see there that the in middle part is thicker. And if you're coming around a curve, that part's thinner, so get them to do this a few times with different things. Doesn't have to look perfect, but if you want, I would exaggerate this if you're doing it for students also, just so you can see kind of a difference there. Um, and then beyond that, um, get them to kind of start with words um, or letters. So I did a couple just basic ones were just like red, green, dog, simple letters, simple words, um, just so they get an idea of how to connect letters together in a, with cursive. So again, if students are younger and have uh, kind of more use, uh, aren't as used to doing cursive, then I would um, maybe give them a lined paper to do this with for like rough drafts and stuff. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfect and different handwriting, different kind of styles is okay as long as you can read it. So give them a little bit longer to do this where they can kind of get an idea of what the letters can look like and to vary it up a bit. And it doesn't really matter what words they use. I would more do words so you get an idea of how to use just connecting letters with the pen. And then beyond that, um, I would try to um, make different styles with one, with one letter. So this is one way you can do a bunch of eyes that I did. Um, Pinterest is also a good place to find uh, calligraphy styles with one letter and they're easy just to put up on the board if you have like a smart board or something. So I would do that just to give them a bit more of a creative idea to do as opposed to just their own handwriting style. Um, but yeah, so beyond that, um, then after that as a final product, I would get them to do something with creative writing. So like a good copy for a creative piece they've done that's like a short story, if it's a really short story, or a poem that they've done. So like you can do a quote also. So say they have a quote they like, but 
I would mostly do like a poem kind of thing. Um, where like I did a poem by Robert Frost. I don't see it, but just kind of like something pretty short, but they can kind of pick what they want to do. So they can do a couple different forms of this, and you can also, if you have the means of doing it, um, different colors of ink, so they can pick what kind of uh, color they want based on, say, the style of the poem, the mood of the poem, or even if the poem is shorter, they can have different kinds of nibs, so then one that's a little bit thicker, that has more bold lines on it, that you could, um, or a kind of thicker tip on it, that you can use that would fill up the paper better, kind of all about perspective and all about choice. So yeah, if you want to go beyond this and kind of make this as part of a unit as opposed to kind of a simply done kind of lesson that only take you about 20 minutes or so, depending, um, then I would connect this to Chinese calligraphy because it's quite different from this style of calligraphy but it's similar in kind of the end purpose and kind of self-expression in terms of writing and style design. Um, and it's also more of like a kind of introducing students to a format of art that they might not be used to and also just different ideals around um, values in terms of writing and also who has the power in terms of who can read and write, uh, who is literate in a society, where does the uh, history of reading and writing kind of go, who was able to read and write. So yeah, um, I would continue there if you want to kind of make it a more flesh out activity. But beyond that, that's just a simple introduction to calligraphy. So thanks for watching.